I want it. I, I just don't, I don't see a situation where Christian McCaffrey falls off, right? Like the, they, they have Tyreek Hill has to deal with the best defense in the league in Baltimore Ravens next week. So it, it's a potential that he explodes and puts himself on the map. But at the end of the season, Christian McCaffrey is going to have more total yards and more touchdowns than Tyreek Hill. And I, and I don't see any other path where that doesn't happen. So it could be special. try it. The 49ers have an it. easier schedule at the end. Okay. I think I think I got a path for it. Let me try it. Maybe this will work. Let's try okay. it. What if – so he's at like 1,650 yards right now. So he would need to average 175-plus mm-hmm. yards the next two games. He's playing against good defense. It's probably not going to happen. But it's sports radio, so let's have the conversation. What if Tyreek mm-hmm. Hill gets to 2,000 receiving yards? Then is he the offensive player of the year? To me, no. Damn. And I and I and I say that because yes, he's breaking a record, but Christian McCaffrey would still have more total yards. So I guess I'm gonna take it back. I, I think records means a lot for voters. So they would give it to Tyreek Hill if he broke a record because they would say it was historic. But I don't think it would be right. I think the whoever has the most total yards and the most touchdowns should win. And I think Christian McCaffrey will. So Tyreek can get 2,000 yards, but he'll still be under Christian McCaffrey with total yards. I'm going to swipe left on the Philadelphia Eagles. Really? Yeah. And all season long, up to maybe a week ago, I was on board with them still having a chance to go to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl. But again, Jalen Hurts with the turnover issues he has and that defense. Like, when's the last time a team – won a Super Bowl where they were last in defense and third down conversions, where they were in the bottom, where they were in the bottom six or seven in t- total overall defense, right? So it's just the numbers and the happened. stats suggest, yes, just the numbers and the stats suggest that they can't get back. So I'm off on the Philadelphia Eagles. What's up How about with AJ you? Brown? AJ Brown stinks all of a sudden. I looked at his numbers. Remember the first half of the season, people were talking about him being offensive player of the year. If your name wasn't Tyreek Hill. Then, I mean, he was the only – Tyree Kill was – maybe you could argue there was another wide receiver. He was at least the second or third best wide receiver in the NFL the first half of the season, talking about A.J. Brown. Dog, he has completely disappeared. What is up? Well, I mean, listen, I, he still has the second best stats for a wide receiver in the league, but the problem is they lack creativity. Brian Johnson lacks creativity, right? Like all your other top-tier wide receivers, you see them lining up in the slot, you see them lining, having a bunch of motion. They're lining up in different places. A lot of what they're doing with the Philadelphia Eagles is old school A.J. Brown just go out there to the left, run a go route or run a slant or run a comeback. Right? <laughs> like it ain't, it's not creative at all. So, so they're hunkering down on A.J. Brown and the offense coordinator is not doing anything creative to really get him open. But dude, he was, I mean, so check out these numbers. Week three, nine catches for 131. Week four, nine catches for 175, then six for 127, seven for 131, 10 for 137, eight for 130, and then something happened. And I don't know what it was. He kind of started pouting in that game versus Dallas. He's only had one 100-yard game since then and one receiving touchdown. So, again, kind of like it takes me a while to say Patrick Mahomes is part of the problem. It sounds like, my guy, it's taking you a while to say A.J. Brown is part of the problem because I'm looking at the numbers right in front of me. He's not the same guy. Yeah, but it's not. It's just them not getting him the rock. It's not something he's doing where he's not catching the ball or he's not necessarily getting open. The defenses are double-teaming him and shadowing him, and there's no creativity. Run a go-route. Like, all right, like – Run a slant. All right. We all know. We all know that's coming. (laughs) Okay, Brian Johnson, put him in the slot. Put him somewhere else to get him open to help him out. And and again, Jalen Hurts hasn't been great in that same time span either. So that doesn't help. There you say Cleveland. There you say no. James, look, look, what, what? The San Francisco 49ers had 231 yards in the first half of that game. At halftime, the San Francisco 49ers were averaging 8.8 yards per play. Where were they doing it? Kittle in the middle of the field. Yeah. I mean, I thought Purdy's going to come out in the second half, throw for 200 yards, and, like, it's like, well, they're not going to keep picking them off, are they? Well, they were. But, like, the way Joe – where Joe Flacco throws the ball, 
the way Joe Flacco attacks seam routes with the tight end and Joku, you can go back to the Cleveland Baltimore game here that Cleveland won five, six weeks ago. And that was pre Flacco. You know, that was Watson's last stand. They didn't have a lot of answers for Joku downfield and with Yak. He was running over people. That's a tough matchup for them. Like Kyle Hamilton on David and Joku. David and Joku was built like Miles Garrett. I mean, so, and. Amari Cooper bombs away. You know, Amari Cooper on Brandon Stevens like that. Brandon Stevens having a great season, but like that would be a tough matchup for four quarters knowing Flacco, they're going to throw the ball 45 times. Like they're going to throw the ball downfield from the first snap to the last. Like you better be ready. Like you, you better be able to hold up. And I think Cleveland, I think Cleveland's defense not as good on the road as at home, but like, Miles Garrett and those guys with the Ravens kind of having this alternating right tackle, left tackle thing. Because Buffalo's pass rush is not what Cleveland's is. You know, Zadarius Smith and Joe Flacco, two former Ravens. Like, I, I people around here were kind of rooting for it. Like, oh, wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be neat? And I've been saying, be careful what you ask for. Because I think Cleveland is the team. Um, I don't even think they try to run it. I think they just say, we're going to throw the ball 55 times today and see what the hell happens. We're going to see if they can keep pace against our defense. Like, I think it'd be a hell of a game. A couple of bowl games that I really like. Louisville giving up seven against USC. Here's my theory, Sean. I don't think you okay. need to dive too deep into these bowl games. I think you need to look at a couple of things. Are the teams playing their starters, or is it a situation where like Florida State or a lot of these other teams where they've decided, screw it. We didn't make the bull game we wanted to. We're just going to move on to the NFL with our best player. So you have to look at the roster. And then here's the other thing. How bad does the team want to win? Because sometimes these bull games are the Super Bowl for these schools. And sometimes it's like, eh, we don't want to go there, but they're making us. So Louisville versus USC. You tell me, which team is hungrier? Which team had preseason expectations? Which team had the Heisman Trophy winner, which team plays in Southern California. And then you got Louisville, who's like, wait, we got a chance to beat this team that doesn't give a damn? Louisville beats them by 40. They're laying seven. And I'm going to use the same rationale. Rutgers versus Miami. This is Miami, the U. They don't care about playing in some bowl game. Nobody's watching in the middle of the day. Rutgers, this is it for them. This is huge. Greg Schiano and the team is back. They get one point. I'll take it. So those are just a few of the bowl games that I've got my eye on. Anything that you like in bowl season, in a second here, we will talk about the playoff. Obviously, that's Alabama, Michigan, and Texas and Washington. No, I was going to say, I'm from the Rutgers area. That game is basically a pick em. Uh <laughs> But Rutgers is the team that I have winning that game, the team that's going to care about that game. Uh, I know what Greg Schiano has done uh, for the team and making the Rutgers a Really competitive team. Like Greg Schiano is a really good coach. They're competitive teams, and they're they're probably a year or two away of actually being a consistently ranked team. So I like Rutgers. They're going to really care about that game. Like you said, USC. Again, there's a reason why USC is not favored. They're not playing their stars. They don't care about this game. They checked out once they got their second loss of the season. So Louisville to cover is the obvious to me.